Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developertoarchitect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 36, we'll take a look at embedded messaging and some of the things that you can do with this really cool technique. So when I talk about embedded messaging, I'm talking about taking any kind of component, whether it be a service, for example, right here, whether it be a layered architecture, an unstructured architecture, pretty much any kind of deployment unit. And what I'm really referring to is embedding a message broker within that deployment unit. And so, for example, here we have a macro service and a service-based architecture. Let's explode this out and actually see what I mean about an embedded broker, because that service consists of all these classes that make up the functionality of that service. In this deployment unit also is an embedded broker. And this embedded broker is actually part of the virtual machine or part of the container or part of that deployment unit. It's actually embedded within uh, the service in this particular case and sits right beside all of the classes. Now let's actually take a look at the usefulness of an embedded broker because I can take a class. Now notice the name of this. Um, that embedded broker has two kinds of identities here. It has a name, embedded one, that I can refer to internally. Or if I want to uh, either advertise access to that particular embedded broker and those specific queues, to the outside world, I can do so, th do so through a TCP connection. And so internally, I access the name. For example, if I have a class inside my virtual machine and I want to connect to that embedded broker, and this is an example using ActiveMQ, I can use the VM or the virtual machine protocol and say VM colon slash slash embedded one, and that will that connect me to that embedded broker. Similarly, as a receiver, I can listen on a queue or a topic by connecting to that broker through that embedded one. Now, one of the advantages of utilizing an embedded broker in this model is the fact that I can help alleviate or eliminate bottlenecks because now if I send a message over to a broker to process and there's parts of that, I can now remove bottlenecks by being able to do a lot of parallel processing within my classes, within my virtual machine. Let's take a look at this embedded broker. Um, this is an example using ActiveMQ. So there's really only three or four lines of code we need to actually start a broker within our container or our virtual machine. And the first, and this is again ActiveMQ, is I instantiate a broker service. Then optionally, I can add an external connector to that broker. In this case, I'm saying localhost or the IP address 61888. Then what I can do is add a name. So if I set the broker name, this allows me to use that virtual machine protocol to be able to connect to that broker and communicate it within my virtual machine through a name. And then I just say broker.start. Four lines of code and I've started up a broker and advertised that broker to the rest of the world. If this is only for internal use, I would not have that second line, by the way, to add that connector. I would just have the name. Now, if I want to connect to the broker, let's take a look at this class on the left-hand side. Now, there's two ways I can connect to an embedded broker. Uh, the first is to basically use the virtual machine protocol. And so here I'm creating a new ActiveMQ connection factory with the virtual machine slash slash embedded one. In other words, the name of that broker. And then I simply create a connection. If I wanted to connect to another embedded broker in another service or another container, then I can connect using that TCP as we normally would with ActiveMQ. Now, alleviating bottlenecks and providing parallelism within my code is one use of an embedded broker, but let me show you another really cool use that I sometimes use, and that is connectionless or brokerless topologies. So on the left hand side, we've got a service that's a wish list, and this maintains the wish list items for our website. On the right hand side, you can see I've got a customer service that contains all the name, the address, uh, demographic kind of information. The wish list service needs to get the name. And so, you know, usually I sometimes can make a restful call, but watch this. There's no um, intermediary within this topology and just using embedded brokers. So what I can do 
is within the wish list, I can connect to that customer service broker that's embedded and send a request to the queue. So watch what happens here. I connect to that customer service, to its, its broker. Now I can send a request to say, can you please give me the name of customer one, two, three, and then I disconnect. There are no connections happening right now in my topology. Now the customer service receives that message and now connects to my response queue. In other words, how to get back to me. So it does a connection to my internal broker, which is where to send the response. It generates that message saying the, the name is Mark and then it disconnects. And so you can kind of see we have this request reply or even notification similar to the prior lesson on the watch pattern, but here what I'm doing is allowing communication between my services and between my applications without any single point of failure or any performance bottleneck. So you can get more information by looking at further lessons on developertoarchitect.com slash lessons. Also, you can find me at certain upcoming events, uh, conferences, uh, training, also some other kind of events, uh, user groups, uh, by going to developertoarchitect.com slash upcoming dash events. And you can find out where I'm at to kind of hear more information about some of this stuff in terms of software architecture and also microservices. And finally, I do offer a three-day uh, hands-on uh, architecture fundamentals course through uh, NFJS, No Fluff, Just Stuff. And you can get more information as well as the links to those by going to my training page there on developer2architect.com. So this has been Software Architecture Mo <coughs> Monday. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me try that one again. And this has been Software Architecture Monday, um, Lesson 36, Embedded Messaging. And again, my name is Mark Richards. Uh, stay tuned next Monday for another lesson in software architecture. Thank you.